Homage to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. Today's guided meditation is on tapping into gratitude. And we acknowledge that for some, gratitude is something that is easy to tap into. And for others, it's not so easy. And so this guided meditation is really acknowledging all the different challenges that come even when trying to tap into gratitude. And even when this is the case, meditating on gratitude is actually a very wholesome activity. It's something that helps to lift the mind, to raise it up, whether it's going about our day or at the start of a meditation, being able to bring the mind to a wholesome place in order to cultivate deeper Dhamma, an inside pathway, and to concentrate the mind. The world we're currently living in is a very unsettled place. It doesn't seem like there's firm ground to stand on. Not in samsara anyway. It feels like the cup has been pulled. What we used to take as assured expected things that we can take refuge in they're no longer there we're not able to travel freely we're not able to go about our daily lives as easily as before so many of us feel a sense of futility a sense of unhappiness, sometimes even going into the depths of depression, despair, maybe even a great deal of sorrow coming up at times. And maybe for others there are pockets of happiness, pockets of contentment, or even some relative happiness and idea of certainty maybe but whatever the case may be whether one's circumstances is very very dire or somewhat alright whichever the case may be or all the different shades of how our lives are currently forming and existing. It's good to peel away some of the layers right now our minds might be imbued with financial worries, worries about our jobs, worries about traveling or being restricted from travel, being frustrated with being restricted from travel, a sadness that we can't be with our loved ones, can't easily see our loved ones in person, maybe even a deep-seated hatred and worry about being isolated, separated from the world, from our usual routines. 
maybe we can't access our schools, our offices, our community buildings, essential services. Take all of that and just put it to the side and ask yourself to give yourself some breathing space, like a temporary moment away from all the worries, all the frustrations, maybe even anger, maybe even conflict, conflict at work, conflict at home, conflict in general. And even setting aside what's happening in politics, what's happening with our neighbors, what's happening with our families, our extended families, our friendship groups, our Dhamma groups, you know, you just, just set it aside for a moment. And let's gradually start to investigate, start to have a look at what we can be grateful for. Now when you set aside just for a few moments all the things that feel heavy and unwieldy and dense, maybe even stressful, habitual, when you put those aside it gives us an opportunity to ask a few questions. To ask ourselves, what can we be grateful for today? Was there somebody that helped us today? It doesn't have to be big, it can be small. At the supermarket, did someone help to pack the bags? Or when you ask someone, did someone help you to find something? Or if you accidentally left something behind, did someone return it to you? Or if you asked for directions, did someone try and or attempt to help you out with those directions? Because in this world where it's increasingly difficult to find kindness, where it's increasingly difficult to find contentedness, openness, flexibility to one another. If something happens today or in the past where someone's helped us, it's good to acknowledge it, to recognize it as something wholesome, something that someone did or shared or responded from a place of goodness, from a place of virtue. Gratitude recognizes goodness in others. Gratitude recognizes virtue, renunciation, that somebody goes out of their way to give their time or give their energy or give their knowledge or give their physical energy. towards us.
And even at work, whatever jobs we do, even though we might be in conflict with some people at work, it's often good to think about, has this person helped me out before? Has this person had kind words to me before? Because it's true that we get into conflict with people time and time again over little things and sometimes big things, but more often than not really finicky little things. But it's always good to ask the question that the person that you're in a bit of conflict with, whether they've helped you before. Like if it's your boss, for example, and there's certain things where you're not getting along or you're frustrated with him or her. But when you think about it, did this person offer you the job in the first place? Has this person been authorizing your salary or wages? At other times, has this person given you time off, even though it's been busy at work? When we ask this question, we're really seeking to investigate, maybe even correct where we've covered up someone else's goodness. Because gratitude is really re rejoicing somebody else's goodness, somebody else's virtue, somebody else's kindness. And even at home, during this time where it seems at times tense, maybe living at close quarters, maybe having to bear with views and opinions, habit tendencies we don't like, we can always ask ourselves, whether any of these family members or people that we live with, whether they have helped us at any time, whether they have offered kindness, whether they have offered physical help, or whether they've comforted us at times when we've been in distress. Quite often we forget these kindnesses But gratitude starts to honor what we have forgotten, what we fail to see, what we begin to acknowledge in others. Even if we struggle with trying to tap into gratitude, that's okay. But use the time to just cast the mind through all the interactions that we have. And even if they're negative, mm -hmm. for each person that comes to mind, just ask yourself whether that person has helped you before, has had a kind word before, has offered comfort before, or has been a good friend or family member, has been flexible, 
open hearted, whatever the case may be, but you ask the question, so it goes against our habitual thinking. During this time it might be very easy to think very negatively, to wallow and lament at personal situations right now. And this exercise in taking a look under our hoods to see what's going on, it helps us to really readjust our thinking, look for the good in people, not always the bad. The world is always promoting and highlighting what is bad in the world. But this meditation is about looking for the goodness, looking for what is skillful, what is wholesome, looking for generosity, whether it's material generosity or generosity of spirit and intention. Even when we eat as simple as a plate of food, we can be grateful for the person who may have prepared the food or the people that may have prepared the food, the people who may have set the table. And then we're grateful for who delivered the food, even in its raw state, or all the workers at the supermarket or the food stores, all the people that drive the trucks that bring the food to the cities or the places where we live. And we're grateful for the farmers and the people that work in the agricultural industry who are really trying to help bring healthy, wholesome food to our table. Always remember that this exercise is about lifting the, the mind from defilements, lifting the mind into something very kusala, very wholesome and skillful. You only need to find one good thing that has happened that you can be grateful for. It may even just be the simple fact that when we were young, our parents looked after us when we were defenseless and totally dependent on others to take care of us. And with no judgment about the quality of care, but just the simple fact that we were fed we had a place to sleep and a place to live and access to the things that were needed. And of course we can go beyond that. We can have appreciation for all our teachers, those that have taught us things at school and if we were in higher education then higher learning or if we learned to trade then the people that um, gave us an apprenticeship or even higher studies and even people that trained us in jobs
And in Dhamma, we can be very grateful for the noble Arahants, for their guidance, their teachings, their good example. And then we come to the Buddha. If there's been any single point of contentment or the ability to concentrate one's mind or to understand the Four Noble Truths or to be inspired to practice, or many, many other things. But we have the Buddha to be grateful for, for all these teachings. And grateful for Brahma Sahampati, who asked the Buddha to teach when he saw that the Buddha had achieved or realized full enlightenment, perfect enlightenment and made the invitation for the Buddha to teach. If it wasn't for Brahma Sahampati, we wouldn't have all this Dhamma being shared by the Buddha. And the Buddha out of compassion and kindness taught all these great Dhammas and gave us the means to get out of the sewer, to release ourselves from sansara. So we can be grateful for the Buddha and the noble arahants for allowing us to see through what is deceptive and practice towards what we recognize as the truth. And so when you gradually build up the meditation, there's immense gratitude And the mind feels very light, very buoyant, very uplifted. And it reminds us that not everything is bad right now. Not everything is frustrating. In our meditation, we can access something very wholesome, something very pleasant, something very real. And it's very close to mudita, sympathetic joy, because we're rejoicing other people's goodness other people's generosity, other people's kindness.
And so from here we can actually carry on with the meditation. We'll just allow the mind to enjoy the goodness, enjoy the lighter, more luminous part of the mind. And you can continue the meditation any way, which way you want. Continue with the inside pathway or some kind of samadhi or vipassana meditation. Whatever is fine because the mind has been lifted from defilements and mental stains. So continue as you wish. Blessings of the Triple Gem. Wishing you all well. Teruan Saranai.